Hello students, today is day three of solving multi-step equations. So remember, uh, you've got an assignment due on Friday over multi-step equations, and we've got a test next week on October the 6th over all of the equations. So yesterday when we did multi-step equations, they were just normal, okay, just normal. And that was what our assignment was at that point in time. So today we're going to look at some crazy things, some things that, that we also need to know about multi-step equations, things that might happen. Okay, so why are we doing all this stuff again? Well, we need to remember our eighth grade standard. It says that we're going to model and solve one variable equations with variables on both sides of the equal sign that represent mathematical and real world problems. So we will get to that part a little bit later in the period. So what I'd like for you to do right now is remember what we did yesterday and the day before and use that information to solve our warm-up question. So pause the video and answer this question to the best of your ability. <clears throat> okay, so let's see how you did. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do in a problem like this is I see there's a minus that I need to take care of. So I'm gonna change this subtraction to addition to seven to its opposite. And again, remember the only reason why I do that is to prevent help prevent making careless mistakes. So now I've got three steps. Step one, step two, and step three. Well, we know step one is going to be to get the letters on one side. Okay, it doesn't matter which side you get it on, as long as you get it on one side of the equal sign. And how do I do that? I add the opposite. So that's what we're gonna do for step number one. I'm gonna move this negative two X over to be with the three X. And to do that, I just add its opposite. So negative two X plus two X, plus negative seven. So this two X is what I added to, to the right hand side in order to move the negative two X over to the left side. So then I just do three X <clears throat> plus eight. And then I add the new thing that I added to the right hand side to the left hand side, the two X. And now I just combine like terms, put things that are alike together. So this three X and this two X could go together to make a five X plus eight equals. And then on the right hand side, my two X's go away and I'm left with just negative seven. So now we're just to a regular two-step equation. So now I need to move the eight over to be with a negative seven, and we do that again by adding its opposite. So plus eight plus negative eight equals negative seven plus the negative eight, because that was the new things that I added. And then we simplify again. So my eights go away. I'm left with five X is equal to, and on the right-hand side, I end up with negative 15. And then I divide both sides by five and we end up with X is equal to negative three. So the first step was to get our letters on one side. We did that. The second step was to get our numbers on the other side and we did that. And the third step was to solve. Now there is a fourth step that I'd like for you to do. And that is to check your answer to make sure it's right. So we take the negative three and we plug it back in. So we would do three times negative three, which would give me negative nine and negative nine plus eight gives me negative one. Then do the same thing to the other side. Negative two times negative three gives me positive six and positive six plus negative seven also gives me a negative one. So that tells me that that answer is correct. So again, we've got three basic steps that we follow. Get the letters on one side, get the numbers on the other. And for both of those, we add the opposite. And then last but not least, we solve. So today we're going to look at some, some strange things that go on in these equations. So what I'd like for you to do is write this equation down and solve it. Okay, so did you run into any issues? I hope you did because there are some issues in this problem. Well, we're going to do the same steps that we've been doing. Step number one, get our letters on one side. So I'm going to move this 9W over to be with this other 9W. That right there should have been the first sign that something was going to be crazy. So I start here with the equals. 9W plus its opposite of negative 9W plus 7. Then over here, 9W plus 3 plus negative 9W. <clears throat> so when we start simplifying, we find out that our 9Ws on the right-hand side actually go away. They're opposites of each other, so I'm left with just three on this side. And then over on the right, if I did everything correctly, they were, the nine W's were supposed to go away, and I would, be in, I would end up with seven. So the strange thing in this particular problem is that my letters went away. 
but I also need you to look at what about that three equals seven? Is that a true statement? Hmm. Well, I need you to write something down for me. Here's kind of a crazy thing. It says, if the variables in an equation are eliminated, in other words, they disappear, and the resulting statement is false, the equation has something called no solution as a solution. So how do I represent that? So our variables were eliminated. They went away. My resulting line is a false statement. So here's what you do if it's a false statement. Three does not equal seven, so I'm going to put a slash through that equal sign. And then there's two types of things that you write on a question like this. One, you say that the solution is the empty set, and that's the symbol for the empty set. Okay, the empty set says, basically, that there is not a number that I can put into W to make this a true statement. So that means that in this problem, there is no solution. There is not an answer that will work on this particular problem. So our answer is no solution. So if you get a, if our variables are eliminated and you get a false statement, you write no solution or the empty set as your answer. Okay, so let's look at another one. So here we go. One of the things that you have to be able to do is recognize when something strange is going to happen. So when we look at this particular problem, <clears throat> do you recognize that something strange is going to happen? <clears throat> In the first one, we had 9W and 9W. That should be a telltale sign something weird is going to happen because they're the same thing on both sides. So in this one, can you tell the same thing? Same thing. So let's go through the motions, though. Let's move this 3W over. So 3W plus negative 3W plus 8. 3W plus 1 plus negative 3W because that was what I added new. So what's going to happen with my Ws? Well, over here, they go away and I'm left with 1 equals... Over here, they go away, and I'm left with 8. So is that a true statement? No, it's not. So what do we do? We put a slash through the equal sign and write no solution or the empty set or both. Okay, so that's what we do. Now, let's look at another one. What if I give you this one? Now, this one's got a couple things going on. Okay, one, you'll notice that, uh-oh, there's a 5M and a 5M. Uh oh, something strange is going to happen. But I'm hoping you also notice that there's something that we can put together. Before you even begin working, you need to look at each side and, and determine, are there parts of this problem I could put together to help simplify? And I'm hoping that you see the 3 and the 4 could go together. So I would write 5M plus, and now what is 3 plus 4? 7 equals 5M plus 7. Now what do you notice about this one? Huh. Not only are my variables the same, but my numbers are the same as well. So let's go through the motions in this one and find out what happens. So I'm going to move this 5m across. So I got equals 5m plus negative 5m plus 7. <clears throat> so 5m plus 7 plus negative 5m. So on the left-hand side, my 5ms are eliminated, and I'm left with 7 equals... And on the right-hand side, I've got the 5Ms eliminated, and I still have a 7. So in the previous problems, we ended up with the statement down here that was false. But in this particular one, what do we notice about that statement? It's true. So what do we do if it's true? Well, I need you to write this one down also. So it says, if the variables in an equation are eliminated and the resulting statement is true, the equation has a solution of all real numbers. Okay, so in this one right here, it makes a true statement. So that means every number that I put into that M will be a true statement. It will make it work. So we just say all real numbers as the solution. Because every number that fits on a number line, I could plug into that M and get the same exact answer. I'd get 7 equals 7 every single time. So every number works. <clears throat> so that's two scenarios that are kind of crazy, okay? Where we've got a normal, regular problem, but our variables are eliminated. And you have two types of answers. If the variables are eliminated and it makes a false statement, you have no solution. If your variables are eliminated and it makes a true statement, your answer is all real numbers, okay? So let's look at a couple of other things that could crop up as we go. So here's the next one. 
Now you'll notice in this one, this one's just long. Okay, so this one is an example of, there's a lot of pre-work sometimes that you have to do before you can actually begin simplifying. So in this particular one, you'll notice there's a lot of things I would change because there's quite a bit of subtraction in this problem. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to change every subtraction to addition. Next number two, they're opposite. Now I can combine anything that looks alike, any like terms. So put those together, try to simplify things. And you'll notice here on the left-hand side, I've got a 10Z and a negative 4Z. Well, when I put that together, I could get 6Z plus negative 15 equal. And on the right-hand side, I've got the 8 and the negative 15 I could put together. So I'd write it as negative 2Z plus an 8, positive 8 plus negative 15 gives me negative 7. Okay, so now once I've simplified it, it doesn't look like anything's going to eliminate. So we just begin. Okay, so now we go with our steps. Step number one, get my letters all on one side. So I'm going to move that negative 2Z. So negative 2Z plus 2z plus negative 7. And then on the right hand side I'd write 6z plus negative 15 plus 2z. And now I combine like terms. My 6z and my 2z will make 8z plus negative 15 equals. Well over here my 2z's go away by design and it's equal to negative 7. So now I move my numbers across. So 8z plus negative 15 plus 15 equals negative 7 plus 15. Now my 15s are eliminated, they go away, and we're left with 8z equals, and negative 7 plus 15 is 8. And now I don't want to know about 8z, I want to know about just 1z. So I take the 8, divide by 8, divide by 8, and I end up with z equals 1. So we did all of that for an answer of 1. Okay, so three scenarios that we've got so far. <clears throat> we've got the ones where our variables are eliminated and it makes a false statement. We get no solution. We have some where our variables are eliminated, but it makes a true statement. So we end up with an answer of all real numbers. And then we have problems that just have a lot of pre-work that we have to do before we can actually even do any. Okay, now there's one other type of problem that, that you might have some crazy stuff that are just straight up problems. And that would be this one right here. Okay, so if you remember in that, that standard that we had, it said that you could have any kind of rational number coefficients. Well, that means you could have fractions or decimals inside those coefficients. And a coefficient is just the number that's with our letter. Now, we could change those to decimals, or we could just work them as fractions. Either one, I'm going to just keep them as fractions, and our process is still the same. Okay? I still need to move this x over to be with that x, and so I do so. And how do I do it? Just because it's a fraction doesn't mean it's any different. You still just add the opposite. So I start at the equal sign. Negative 5 fourths x plus 5 fourths x. That's still its opposite. And then plus 8. Then on the other side, I write 3 fourths x plus 2 plus 5 fourths x, which was the opposite that I added on the other side. So now if we look over here and simplify this left hand side, I've got 3 fourths and I've got 5 fourths. Now to add fractions, we know we've got to have common denominators. Well, we have that. So if I have 3 fours and 5 fours, how many fours does that make all together? That makes 8 of them. So we end up with really 8 fourths x. But what does 8 fourths simplify to? 8 fourths would simplify down to just plain old 2x plus 2 equals. And then over here, my 5 fourths go away, and we're left with 8. So now it turned out to be a nice pretty problem. So now I just move the 2 over to be with 8. So 2x plus 2 plus negative 2 equals 8 plus negative 2. So 2x is equal to 6. And then we divide both sides by 2, and you end up with x is equal to 3. And you could plug it back in and check it. And the way you would check that with a fraction is you, like we would do 3 times 3 and then divide by 4 plus 2. This one we'd do negative 5 times 3 divide by 4 plus 8. That's all we have to do to check those. Okay, so those are just some straight up problems. We found that there are some strange things that go on in those problems. But then we also know that that standard says that you have to not only solve these with just regular stuff, 
but we also got to look at real world problems. And anytime you have a real world problem, you know we're going to end up with words. It's going to be a word problem. <clears throat> so this one says, Daisy's flowers sell a rose bouquet for $39.95 plus $2.95 for every rose. A competing floor sells a similar bouquet for $26 plus $4.50 for every rose. Find the number of roses that would make both florist bouquets cost the same price. So in a situation like this, what we're going to have to do is write an equation and then solve it. Okay. So let's look at Daisy's Flowers. Well, Daisy's Flowers, they sell a bouquet for $39.95 plus $2.95 for every rose. So that means our variable in this case stands for roses. Okay, so we could write this as $39.95 plus $2.95 for every rose. And we want to find out when is this one equal to the other place. Well, the other place is $26 plus $4.50 for every rose. Okay, so that would be $26 plus $4.50. For every rose. Now you'll notice those numbers really aren't that great, okay? So, and that's okay. They're not necessarily going to be nice, pretty numbers all the time. And when you're dealing with real world stuff, real world has a tendency to be kind of ugly. So, let me move all this stuff up so that we can see what we're working on. And let's solve this one. Now, this one I can almost guarantee you're going to need a calculator for it. So, let me get my calculator here so that we can answer this question. Okay, so our steps are still the same. Get our letters on one side. So I'm gonna move this 450 over to be with that 295R. Okay, so I start at the equal sign. 26 plus 4.5R plus negative 4.5R. And you'll notice I did knock off the zero off that 450. It's okay. We'll put it back in money when we get an answer. So over here, I've got 39.95 plus 295R plus 4.5 R and it should be a negative 4.5 R. So now we take our little calculator and I got to put these two right here together, the 295 and the negative 450. So 2.95 plus negative 4.5, enter, and you end up with 39.95 plus negative 1.55 <coughs> R equals. Now over here, my 4.5 R's go away and I'm left with 26. So that step is still the same. It's just my numbers look uglier, but it's still exactly the same. So now I'm going to move this 39.95 over to the 26. So 39.95 plus negative 39.95 plus negative 1.55 R equals 26 plus negative 39.95. So now my 39.95s go away. I'm left with negative 1.55 equals or R equals, sorry. And then over here, I do 26 plus negative 39.95 and hit enter. And I end up with negative 13.95. And now how do I get rid of the multiply by 1.55? I do a divide by negative 1.55. And I end up with R is equal. And so I do that negative 13.95 divided by negative 1.55. And you find out that R is equal to nine. Now, what kind of a label would we have on this? The question asks, how many roses do you need to sell in order for the bouquets to be the same? So this nine is roses. So that's a real world situation problem. Now, if you'll notice, everything is exactly the same. It's just your numbers are a lot more difficult. But since you have a calculator, it's really not that bad. Now, we've got one more problem I want us to look at before we end our lesson for today. And that's this one right here. It says, I want you to write an equation to find the value of X so that each pair of polygons has the same perimeter. Well, we know perimeter is the distance around a shape. <coughs> so for this triangle to find its perimeter, I'm just gonna add those three pieces together. For the rectangle, I'm gonna add all four pieces together. But you'll notice my numbers really aren't nice numbers. They're like algebraic expressions, and that's okay. So here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna take these three pieces right here and add them together. So I'm gonna write x plus six plus x plus nine plus x plus three equals, and that would be the perimeter of that triangle. 
Now on the other side, this rectangle, I'm going to write x plus 4 plus x plus 1. So that gets me from here to here. And now we know we got two more pieces. So plus, and this piece would be the same as this piece. So x plus 4. And then this piece would be the same as this one. So x plus 1. And now all we have to do is add that together. Now that looks kind of complicated, but now we're going to combine like terms. So I've got this x, this x, and this x, which really make 3x. My pen's not working right there. Plus, let me see if I can write that again, because it did not want to write. So I got 3x plus, and now I got 6 and 9, which make 15, 16, 17, 18. Equals, and I do the same thing to the other side. Here's an x, here's an x, here's an x, here's an x. So that gives me 4x plus, and then 4 plus 1 is 5, plus 4 is 9, plus 1 is 10. And now it looks a lot easier. All right, so pause the video and solve the rest, the rest of this problem for me. Okay, so let's see how you did. I'm now going to move this 4x over to be with the 3x. So I go 4x plus negative 4x plus 10. On this side, I've got 3x plus 18 plus negative 4x. And then now I simplify. So the 3x and the negative 4x make negative 1x or negative x plus 18 equals. My 4x just go away and I'm left with 10. So now I move my 18 over. So I end up with negative x plus 18 plus negative 18 equals 10 plus negative 18. And so you end up with negative x is equal to, and then over here, negative 8. Now the other day I talked to you about what happens if my variable is negative. Okay, all we have to do to turn it into a positive x is change the x to positive, and whatever the other number is, whatever its answer is, change it to its opposite. So that tells me that x has to be 8. So if I wanted to actually find the perimeter of each of these, I could take, plug in, plug in an 8 right there in that x. Plug in an 8, plug in an 8, figure out each individual length and add them together. Over here, do the same thing. 8 plus 4, 8 plus 1. Then this one here would be 8 plus 4. This here would be 8 plus 1. And you could then find the perimeter of each of those shapes. So what we're finding out today is that we, we've talked about a lot of things. We've talked about what happens if you know, my letters disappear. We found out that there's two types of questions. One where there's no solution and one where there is all real numbers. We learned that sometimes you may have to do a lot of pre-work to do it. But we also found out that algebra really does show up in the real world. Algebra really is in the real world. Okay, and we can use that to our benefit by knowing how to do all of these types of questions. Okay, so we're going to finish this lesson tomorrow and work on the assignment. So until then, I'll talk to you later.